Hello everybody, this video is on polarization and Malice's law. Electromagnetic waves consist of electric and magnetic fields, which oscillate perpendicularly to one another. While these two fields must remain perpendicular at all times, there can be many pairs of these waves, which are orientated at different angles. The orientation of an electric field doesn't need to be vertical, as what's normally illustrated in most diagrams, but it can be at an angle. When the electric field of an EM wave is at an angle, the magnetic field must also be at a different angle than what it's normally illustrated, such that the angle between the magnetic field and the electric field will remain perpendicular. It is important to understand that only transverse waves, which electromagnetic waves are also classified as, can be polarized. Longitudinal waves, such as sound, cannot be polarized because the direction of oscillation is parallel, not perpendicular, to the direction of propagation. The axis along which the electric field is oscillating is referred to as its polarization or polarizing axis. When a wave possesses many different axes of polarization, so that is, when it has electric fields that oscillate in different directions, it is referred to as an unpolarized wave. In contrast, when a wave consists of only a single axis of polarization, it is said to be polarized. We'll discuss polarization using light for the remainder of this video. Unpolarized light can be transformed into polarized light using a polarizer. A polarizer is able to transform unpolarized light with many different axes of polarization into a single axis of polarization via various mechanisms. You don't need to know how this is done, but one such mechanism is through the absorption of light with unwanted axes of polarization. The polarizing axis of the light that passes through a polarizer is always the same as the transmission axis of the polarizer. For example, the transmission axis of this polarizer is vertically orientated, which causes the polarizing axis of the polarized lights to be also vertically orientated. The effect of a polarizer on the intensity of lights can be quantitatively analyzed using Malice's law. Now suppose we have a vertically polarized light about to pass through a polarizer whose transmission axis is inclined at an angle theta relative to the vertical line. So in this case, the angle between the transmission axis and the original polarizing axis of the light is marked by angle theta. The electric fields of the original and the final polarized light can be analyzed by drawing this right angle triangle. E0 is the electric field vector of the original light, and E1 is the electric field vector of the polarized light after it has passed through the polarizer. E0 is the hypotenuse, and E1 is the adjacent side next to the angle theta. So we can say that E1 divided by E0 is equal to cosine theta, the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So by rearranging this equation, we can get E1 equals E0 times by cosine theta. We also know that the intensity of light is directly proportional to the square of its electric field vector. So by squaring both sides of my first equation, I can obtain an expression in terms of the intensity of the final light source and the original light source. This equation is what we call Malice's law. I equals to I0 times by cosine squared theta. Unpolarized light can be thought as light consisting of polarizing axes evenly distributed in all directions or all, all angles. Since the average value of cosine squared theta, where theta can range from zero degrees to 360 degrees is 0.5, the intensity of unpolarized light is always reduced by 50% that is, it always halved after it passes through a polarizer. This phenomenon applies to all polarizers regardless of the transmission axis. So it doesn't matter if the transmission axis is vertical, at an angle, or horizontal. Whenever you have unpolarized light 
passing through a polarizer, the intensity is always halved. For example, if the intensity of the original unpolarized light is 100 watts per meter squared, it will be reduced to 50 watts per meter squared after passing through a polarizer with a vertical transmission axis. The final intensity here will always be 50 watts per meter squared, even if the angle of this transmission axis changes. When polarized light passes through a polarizer, its intensity is also affected. However, unlike unpolarized lights, the extent to which its intensity is reduced by depends on the angle between the light's polarizing axis and the transmission axis of the polarizer. This is given by the angle theta in Malice's law. The final intensity as a proportion of the initial intensity varies sinusoidally, specifically as a function of cosine square theta. The red curve on this graph shows a shape of cosine squared function. Now I want you to compare this to the blue curve which shows the normal cosine function. When the angle between the polarizing axis of light and the transmission axis of the polarizer is equal to 90 degrees, that is when they're perpendicular, the value of cosine square theta becomes zero. This means no light will be able to pass through the polarizer as the final intensity equals zero. Let's take a look at a sample calculation question. A beam of light passes through two polarizers. The second polarizer has a transmission axis at an angle of 60 degrees. So we draw a vertical line down the middle. This angle here will be 60 degrees. The intensity of light before and after the second polarizer is I naught and I B. Uh, what is the final intensity of light compared to the original intensity before it passes through the first polarizer? The original intensity refers to the intensity of light before the first polarizer, and the final intensity is IB in this case. We need to do this question two steps because there are two polarizers. The second polarizer can be analyzed using Malice's law, where IB equals the I naught cosine square theta. IB divided by I naught would then equal to cosine squared of 60 degrees, which yields a value of a quarter. So this means IB is exactly a quarter the intensity of I naught. But the question wants the original intensity. If we assume that the beam of light at the beginning is unpolarized, then after passing to the first polarizer, the intensity will be reduced by 50%. So that means I naught is half the value of the initial intensity. So then IB will be a quarter times by a half of the original intensity, so I original, which yields a value of 1 eighth or 12.5%. So the value of IB, the final intensity, after passing the second polarizer, is only 12.5% of the original intensity of the unpolarized light. Let's take a look at another question. Unpolarized light is passed through three polarizers. The three polarizers have a transmission axis of 0 degrees. 45 degrees and 90 degrees relative to the vertical respectively. What is the intensity of light after it passes through the third polarizer as a percentage of the initial intensity? So after the unpolarized light passes through the first polarizer, it gets reduced by 50%. So only 50% of the intensity is remaining. The angle between the transmission axis of the second polarizer and the polarizing axis of light coming out of the first polarizer will be 45 degrees. So we can say that the intensity after coming out of the second polarizer, let's call that I2, and this is I1. I2 then will be equal to I1 cosine squared 45 degrees. So then I2 over I1 will be a half. So going from I1 to I2, we are further reducing this by half. So this was already 50% before. So if we half this percentage, we'll get 25%. After I3, Although this angle here is 90 degrees relative to the vertical, what we are really concerned about in Malice's law is the angle between the transmission axis of the third polarizer and the polarizing axis of I2. Because I2 is already at 45 degrees and the third polarizer is at 90 degrees, the difference between these two angles is 45 again. 
So in my second equation for Malice's law, I am using 45 degrees again. This will then give us I3 over I2 is equal to a half. After passing through the third polarizer, my 25% intensity is halved once again. And that means I have 12.5% of intensity remaining. A very interesting scenario to think about is what happens to the intensity if we remove the middle polarizer? Now, the polarizing axis that's exiting the first polarizer will be vertical due to the transmission axis of the first polarizer being vertical. When it passes through the third polarizer, there's actually no light passing through because now the angle between the transmission axis of the third polarizer and the polarizing axis of light that's about to enter the polarizer is equal to 90 degrees. And we know that cosine square of 90 degrees yields a value of zero, which means I3 over I1 is equal to zero. Polarization of light plays an important role in the development and acceptance of various models of light. Huygens' wave model of light could not explain polarization because he described light as longitudinal. If this was the case, light will pass through all polarizers without any reduction in intensity because in longitudinal waves, the direction of oscillation is in the same direction as propagation. So by having a polarizer, it would not be able to filter any of the light waves if they were longitudinal. Similarly, Newton's corpuscular model, which describes light as a stream of particles, also could not explain polarization as light corpuscles would just pass through polarizers unfiltered as well. The phenomenon of polarization of light validated Maxwell's electromagnetic transverse wave model of light. It is also a wave model, however, it is a transverse wave model. In this model, Maxwell described light as a product of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that propagate in the same direction. The transverse wave model of light explains why light intensity will be reduced when light of a specific polarizing axis tries to pass through a polarizer as a polarizer will only let light of a certain polarizing axis pass through. As we previously discussed using Malice's law, if the polarizing axis, that is the direction of oscillation of the electric field, is perpendicular to the transmission axis of the polarizer, then no light will be able to pass through. In summary, polarization validates Maxwell's transverse wave model of light, and it refutes Huygens' longitudinal wave model and Newton's corpuscular model of light. This concludes the video on polarization.